Okay, working on this Volvo Penta HS1 hydraulic transmission behind a 74 GI, I believe, in a 299 Baja. And a uh, customer's complaint was slipping them forward. Well, I got this drum taken apart here where these clutches are, and these things are Chernobyl. Look how warped they are. <laughs> I think. Wow. This is uh, anytime it revs up past two grand, it slips. Well, no shit. So we'll see if we can't come up some parts for this old girl. Maybe we can make her live again. Okay, I'm working on this HS1A marine transmission here off this uh, Volvo Penta. And it came in, it was burned up, you know, forward especially. And I didn't really know why. I mean, I know why now, that's why I'm doing this video so somebody else doesn't get caught. But, you know, th th these are the forward plates here. See, it looks like Chernobyl, it's all smoked, okay? Well, reverse, you're not reverse that much. Reverse didn't look that bad. But I noticed on disassembly, look at this, top plate look how the uh teeth are bent up see how that's been crooked see how that you, you can tell oh, there you go. see how the the towards my fingers see how the uh, teeth are bent and they're not on the other side well, that's cocked all right that's the only thing that's going to do that is it had to be cocked in the drum okay well, i didn't really know why at first so i tore it down ordered all the parts and then the parts come in okay one of the first things I noticed is the clutch kits got updated to a different part number, which isn't odd anymore, you know? And there's all kinds of updates, and this stuff is old. This stuff is from the 1990s, so. But anyway, I noticed that each clutch pack kit came with two additional steels. Well, when I took it apart, I didn't have those two additional steels. I had the eight and seven, like the service manual called for, and I'll get to that in a minute. But. The other thing that seemed goofy on this transmission is you could tell it had been apart before uh, for two reasons. Number one, there's different colors of stuff. See how that's green on this lower housing? Well, in Volvo Penta world, green is usually their diesel engines. Their gas engines, depending on years, were red or charcoal. So when you see green, it's diesel. So who knows, this could have been off of TMAD 3031, a 40, who knows? And it's, it's a rehash, okay? So you come over here to the uh, the output flange. Look at the output flange, it's green. Okay, so those are clues right away that something isn't right, all right? Where somebody's had their hands in it, which always makes it more difficult, especially when you're not totally familiar, as I am not. I am not an expert on HS1A. I might be when this is over with, <laughs> as long as it works. But anyway, what I wanted to explain here is I put this thing together. Okay, I assembled this shaft, which is a complete pain in the ass. All right, and I noticed there's a gap, all right, between the clutch. This is actually the backing plate. The piston, which is right here, okay, goes into here. Now, I'm going to put air in here. So, I, I decided I wanted to air check this thing, okay? And there's a clutch kit in here, all right? So, the input shaft drives this on the other end. So, it drives this whole operation. See how this is spinning and that's not turning? That's, that's right, because it's in neutral. But what I notice is when I air check it, is that a clutch plate pops out and it and it jams. I'm like, that's not right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put air right here. Oops. Try it again here. Get the right hole, right? Uh, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna blow air in here. Pops right out. Look at that. There's no way that's right. Okay? Because obviously this transmission, I'm sitting, you know, perpendicular. This is the top. You know, so this would face up. Well, you can't tell me that that plate's not going to fall out of there. Well, 
Let's go back to our original findings. Look at this plate, hot, okay? I can see this thing had to come dislodge out of that drum, all right? Well, no shit, because once this thing pops out, how's that piston gonna go down and, and properly apply this clutch? So I think that's why it burned up. So I looked through the service manual and it doesn't say anything. It just says, hey, eight and seven. You know, eight friction, seven steels. So obviously I left these two out. I'm like, God, why are they giving me these two? Well, there's, again, there's probably a reason. The other thing I thought that was weird is this piston. These clutch discs at the end go right up against the piston. Now, in all my years, I have never seen a clutch plate, and I do auto car transmissions and everything, I've never seen a clutch plate touch the piston directly, a friction plate. Steel plates, yes, backing plates, yes, never a friction plate. So you come over here, and this is the clutch kit part number, by the way, 3885079. That number is the latest kit from Volvo. So here's, here's a, a copy of the service manual. The service manual says, okay, Chris, put the clutch disc in an oil bath and put one friction disc in the housing followed by a steel plate. Continue to alternate the plates. Finish off with a friction disc. So there should be eight friction, seven steels. So you finish with a friction, okay? You know, and it's saying, hey, there's some gaps in the teeth, who cares, all right? Well, this is the piston where it goes right over top, all right? And they got this special apparatus that I don't own, but I made a tool to work to get that lock ring in. Well, you can see that gap, all right? You know, obviously I've got this all pressed together, which obviously it's gotta come back apart. But, you know, with that clutch plate hanging there, there there's no way that's right. So, old friend, Mr. Google, right? What, what do we all do nowadays? We go to YouTube, we go to Google. So here, I find a TSB, all right? And this TSB is all the way back from 2008, all right, 44-2 was the group number. But anyway, look what it says. Disc kit 876-591 for the HSM reverse gear has been replaced by the 388-5079. This new kit contains as before, eight-piece friction discs, and now has nine steel discs. We've got two more additional discs as compared to the previous seven steels. The new steel discs are thinner, for which reason is the height of the disc pack remains unchanged. So that's why this is a thinner pack. They're adding two more steels, so you got the same stack up, you know, distance. So the new disc packs involves a change to the installation procedure that's now begun with the steel and concluded with a steel. The information is bulletin updates item 11 on page 31. Well, guess what? This is page 31 and item 11. So they, you know, this bulletin is to update their, <laughs> their, their uh, original service manual. So, I mean, luckily I found this on Google, you know, again, because what I saw here and what I had, you know, originally, and like I say, unfortunately it was a part so somebody made the mistake the last time this was overhauled. They must have left these discs out, okay, because they went by the service manual as, you know, a, probably a general person would do. But as a technician, your best tools are what God gave you. That's your vision, your touch, and your hearing. So obviously our vision here told me that that ain't right. And I believe I caught this from failing on me you know, because this thing, if I would have shipped it, because they don't tell you in the book to air check this. They just tell you to put it together, check the shimming, and, and ship it. Good luck. You know, I just, since doing transmissions all these years, I like to check as much as I can. So I put air right here, which should air up those clutches. I want to make sure I don't have a seal tore. I want to make sure, and like I say, when that popped out, I can't even see that one. But trust me, I took a mirror in there and looked, it's out. You know, so I'm like, th th this isn't right. So just goes to show you what makes our job so difficult is... You know, A, lack of information. You know, manufacturers don't give you anything, you know, and especially we're not a Volvo Penta dealer. You know, get, getting information is a pain in the ass, you know. So for us, independent-wise, and even the dealers, you know, I mean, you don't do a lot of these. They're probably not going to search for bulletins. They're going to go to the service manual. They're going to slam dunk it, you know. So, and trust me, we make mistakes here. I don't want anybody to think we bet a 1,000. We don't. But, you know, again, the clues been rehashed. Green paint, you know. So somebody took two transmissions, made one, they overhauled it, you know, they didn't pay attention, unfortunately, and that's what I believe caused this failure. So, you know, sometimes late night internet search, when you have a revelation and you're not sleeping well because you know something's not right, you know, it probably isn't right. So I just want to share this on what we found on this 
and so somebody else doesn't get caught on this because like I said this these parts are expensive I, I mean, I think I've got over $2,000 in clutches, gaskets and seals and pistons for this thing. So this would have been a horrible, horrible comeback. You know, hopefully it isn't a comeback, but you know, that's what I'm trying to prevent. So I knew something wasn't right, so I wanted to do some research. So I just want to explain how it was found because to me, the process is what's important here. You know, how did this get checked? You know, why? You know, it, it's easy to read manuals and put stuff together, you know, but the manual only gets you so far, you know. But like I said, I should have known better when I saw these extra two plates, you know, two per clutch pack. But like I said, the manual, manual says, yeah, don't worry about it, you know, until you find a TSB. <laughs> so I hope this uh, helps somebody out in the future. All right, here's the other drum. See the clutch plate hanging out? It's popped out of position there. That would have smoked, guaranteed. All right, we're ready to assemble this clutch the correct way. So we got our dished wave, and the dish goes up. Oh, it's hard to see but the, the OD goes against the clutch hub. We'll start with a steel, with this new design pack. And then we alternate friction, steel, friction. So I'm not gonna tape the rest of this, you get the idea, and I'll come back when it's time to put the hub on. All right, I've got the pack stacked up. You can see it's almost flush here with the uh, clutch hub. So I think we're in uh, pretty good shape here. So we'll go ahead and put the piston on. I got trans jelly in there to hold the, uh, see there's an O-ring on the inside here that seals in here because the oil's coming up through there. We'll put the ring on. All right, I got the first drum together, and you can see that I have no more clearance there. So we air check this baby. Let's get the right hole here. Get a nice spin to it. I think she's gonna fall out now. So now I feel confident we got this thing figured out. All right, I got both clutch drums back together, installed back in the case. You see, it looks really good. I don't see. I see the. I see the piston right up there. Feels good there. Neutral. We'll add some air. thing back together so just uh just gotta pay attention you know luckily i think i caught this because this would have been bad <laughs> okay got the uh front bearing cover installed that's the right amount of clearance it's supposed to have feels great so we'll go ahead and put the pump on. Okay, looking at the pump here in our HS1A, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's nice and smooth, there's no scoring. The housing looks good. So we'll just wash this up, put some oil in it, and torque it up and put it on. All right, testing our HS1A two to one reduction. Nice and 
quiet. Yep. Yeah, but...